Hello, this time I'd like to talk about Smart Graphic Control. It's a panel that controls graphic symbols when they're used as containers for static images. Similar to typing a number just here in the looping section of your properties, but visually. So the two main functions of the panel are that it allows us to create thumbnails for the contents of a graphic symbol and then control that graphic symbol even without unlocking the layers that contain the symbol. As you could see, I pressed this thumbnail of the closed eyes and we just switched to this frame. We can see that it's uh, highlighted now. If I click this one now, keys will be created automatically for the eye whites and the mask. So another very powerful feature of this panel is that it allows us to synchronize symbols to other symbols. In cases like this one, when we have a, the eye whites and the mask on separate layers, the mask masks the irises and underneath we have the eye whites. Please bear with me, this will be a long demo as I walk you through all the features of this extremely powerful tool. If your panel is closed, in Flash you can open it from the window menu, you go to other panels and then SGC and it will pop out. In Animate it's slightly different, it's under Window, Extensions, SGC1. There's a number at the end of the panel name because you can have multiple panels. If you would like to have on screen, say, the eyes and the mouth and the hand and so on and so on, you can just keep adding panels. How do you do this? From the drop down in the panel menu, you go create new panel. You'll need to restart the program. You hit OK and I'll restart animate after we restart we can see here is a second panel in the menu we can create as many panels as we need and keep them all open although i will probably advise you to stay within reasonable limits okay at the bottom here we have the load thumbnails button if nothing selected on the stage or if all layers are locked and we press the button, if thumbnails have already been created for some symbols, a dialog will pop up asking us which one we would like to load in the panel. So this time I will choose the muzzle. Thumbnails for the mouth will load. So now I have one panel displaying the eyes and another one displaying the the mouth, if I click on frame number 3 and the mouth will open and a key will be created automatically without the need to unlock the layers. There are some settings that we can choose for those thumbnails. By default we get the label, which is this text here. We get the label from the symbol name, but we can give it any desired name. Then this is just the color of the text and we can choose various sizes for the thumbnails. Let's just go for slightly larger ones. Here we go. Now we can see them better. Now that I've given you a bit of an overview of the panel's functionality, let's uh, methodically go through all the important features and functions. What we have here are three symbols that contain numbered frames inside them. If I select the first one and press load thumbnails, the panel will create thumbnails for the whole contents of the container. There are lots of frames, actually 60 frames inside the symbol. This is my main symbol. And if I go to any frame, since auto key is selected and the symbol is stopped, 
I can just click on any of these thumbnails and the panel will keep switching or displaying that specific frame. Now, what I can do is I can sync this other symbol to our first symbol. So the orange one will be synced to the yellow one by pressing this little chain button here. I'll call this orange sync and go save. This time as I keep choosing the frame for the yellow symbol, as you can see, the orange one is automatically synced with the yellow symbol. Now, this setting here, which again pops up the same dialog about syncing that we already saw, we can choose a different offset. So if I choose an offset of one, the orange symbol will always run one step ahead of the yellow one, as you can see demonstrated here. We can also temporarily disable syncing by clicking on this button here. You can see the icon changes to a broken link and for a while we can only control this symbol while in this next key I'll reactivate the syncing and we'll control both of them. Okay, I'll reverse to no offset just for the sake of clarity and I will delete these keys. Now let's select the orange one and create thumbnails for it to make it the main symbol in this other SGC panel. So in the first panel we have the orange one synced to the yellow one and here I will do something else. I will sync the blue one to the orange one. Blue, sync, okay. Now the orange symbol controls the blue symbol and the yellow symbol keeps controlling the orange symbol. How about if I create thumbnails for the blue symbol? Now I can sync both of these and make them controlled by the blue symbol assigning them different offsets and different type of behavior which should be self-explanatory. So all kinds of combinations are possible. Symbols can be both masters and synced at the same time. If you want to break a sync all you need to do is just click on this little X here. The sync will be broken and now the blue one only controls the yellow one. Now something interesting worth mentioning is that if you have quite many frames inside a symbol and you need to have quick access to different places within this scrolling list, you can control click on a specific frame and it will be bookmarked. So I'll bookmark this one and I will bookmark this one. If I click on the first star, we'll jump to frame 31. If I click on the second star, we'll jump to frame 56. You can see the visual hint that this is a bookmarked frame and then I'll bookmark frame number one as my third bookmark. So we can very quickly jump to three locations within the long list of frames in our symbols. What happens if we 
add a frame at the end if we keep adding frames. Our last frame here is 60. Now imagine I decide to add a couple of more frames. This time it'll be just different color and they will be numbered. The way to refresh or reload the symbol would be to hold down control and click the button again. Now if we scroll down you'll see the two new frames appeared here. And finally just another practical example how the panel can be used. I have not generated thumbnails for this character yet so if I click on this hand, this is my selection here on the stage, press the button. As you can see, thumbnails were created for the hand. Now, I'll link the other hand to this one, just imagining that we would like to control them at the same time and see, they work together simultaneously. If we don't need to do this, I'll just temporarily disable the link and only the main one will be controlled. If I enable the link upon the next press, both hands start working together again. But I also would like to have control over some facial features I can choose the mouth and generate thumbnails for the mouth. You can see this one is not active because we're not on the timeline. We can only control what's um, in our current timeline. So if I jump back to this level, you can see these become active and these become grayed out. Finally, we can delete the currently loaded thumbnails from here and there is also a setting in edapt control panel which allows you to clear the cache although all these thumbnails are tiny and you shouldn't really worry about them and there's another self-explanatory checkbox here you can try and see what it does and one last thing that may be of interest. If we look at the eyes here, the best example would be, would be this. On the bottom layer, I only have the white. And above it, I have the outlines. So the bottom layer works as a mask and the layers above it are just decorations. So if I duplicate the same symbol, I'll choose here frame, frame one for both. So I'm using the same symbol as eye whites and it's the same symbol in sync as the mask which masks the irises. Now the closed eyes basically have a little invisible dot on the bottom layer as a mask which doesn't overlap with the irises and everything is on the top layer. So if I if I unlock the mask, you can see the irises are still there. But because the mask is just this, this dot here, it does not reveal anything. And this is how I usually rig my eyes using one and the same symbol as a mask and as eye whites. I'll just load the mouth here and make him smile. Thanks for watching.